This is Christian Posta from Solo.io, and in today's recording, we're going to take a look at Service Mesh Hub. And specifically, what we're announcing today is Service Mesh Hub open source, which is the easiest way to get started with multi cluster service mesh and managing multi cluster Istio. Now, Service Mesh Hub comes out of a vision we outlined a year and a half ago or so when we announced a project called Superglue. And the, the point of this project, Service Mesh Hub, is to manage multiple clusters of a Service Mesh, potentially heterogeneous deployments of Service Mesh on premise or on premises and in a, a, a cloud. So let's kick this off. We're looking at Service Mesh Hub. So if you go to GitHub, you can take a look at um, the is an open source project. And in this demo, what we're going to do is deploy multiple clusters of Istio and group them to make them look like a single virtual mesh and then apply routing rules on top of that. So let's take a look at that. We're going to be running the demo using the service mesh CLI, service mesh hub CLI mesh CTL and we're going to run demo init and demo init is what is it's going to do is spin up a couple of Kubernetes clusters. In this case, it's kind in Kubernetes in Docker and we'll then install Istio on each of those clusters. It won't do any of the networking or grouping that I mentioned. We'll do that in, in the demo step by step and we'll show you exactly what it's doing and how it's doing it. Now, downloading Istio and spinning up Kubernetes in Docker does tend to take a little bit of time downloading some of the images. If you do this same configuration on a real life Kubernetes cluster, you can see that the images are probably downloaded a little faster, but in this case, we're doing this locally on my machine. But you can see how easy it is to get started with a multi-cluster setup to, for, for experimentation in this case. So we see that the clusters are now up and they are ready to go. We want to take a look at the pods that are running and we can see that they are, some of them are still coming up. The Istio operator that we'll use to install Istio 1.5 and some of the components that we use in Service Mesh Hub. Now we can see things are running, so we can continue. The first thing that we want to point out, and we won't go into as much detail in this demo, there will be further demos where I go into a lot more detail about how this stuff works. But Service Mesh Hub can manage and discover clusters. And when it sees a cluster, it can look in that cluster and say, oh, this is running a service mesh, and this is an Istio service mesh, or this is a Linkerd service mesh. So we get discovery of the contents of the cluster, specifically what service meshes are running out of the box with Service Mesh Hub. Now we'll run a check here. It looks like everything ran satisfactorily. And then we're going to take a look at each of the clusters and we'll see that we're running Istio, running the Istio 1.5 deployment. So this is the first cluster. If we look in the second cluster, we should see another deployment of Istio. So the two separate clusters, two different deployments of the Istio control plane. As, like I said, Service Mesh Hub can detect and discover these service meshes. So first of all, we can see the different clusters that we're aware of, and we can also register other clusters if we like. So we're doing two clusters here, but it's not limited to two. You could add three or four or five or whatever, and um, and continue on with, with this demo. We can see we've seen two, we've discovered two different service meshes, two different Istio clusters. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the book info demo on cluster one. 
what we're going to do is we're going to install, if you're familiar with the book info demo, just some of the components. So the review service will install version 1 and version 2 into this cluster. So let's go ahead and do that. First we'll label the default namespace and then we'll actually apply the book info manifest that has the book info sample with version one and two of the of the reviews service. You can see that here. And let's watch for those components to come up. And we'll give that a second. So now we're back and it took about 45 seconds or so for these things to come up. And I skipped that on, on the video, but we can see that we have some of the components for book info up and running on cluster one. And what we're gonna do now is port forward so that we can actually come check out the book info demo, go in as a normal user. And if we refresh this a couple of times, what we should see is the load balancing for the review service happening. Oh, maybe we lost the connection here, let's try again. We should see it load balance between version one and version two with the black stars here. Now if you're familiar with the Istio book info demo, we also know that there's a version three which, which shows red stars. And so what we're going to do here is install version three, but we're going to install version three on a second cluster. So we'll label that one. So we get the auto injection and then we'll install version three of reviews on the second cluster. And we'll give that a few moments to come up. And now we see that those workloads have come up. The Docker images have downloaded to my machine and started. Again, this is running in kind or, or Kubernetes and Docker, which takes a little bit to download the images sometimes. So now we have the book info components running in cluster one and some of the book info components running in cluster two. But if we go to the book info page, we still see that uh, traffic's load balanced over V1 and V2 of the reviews service. Okay. Now let's, we have these two different Istio service meshes. Let's group them so that they're part of a single virtual mesh and let's treat that as a single mesh. So what we're going to do is look at our virtual mesh CRD. And this is a CRD that's offered by Service Mesh Hub. Service Mesh Hub has other configuration CRDs that you can use to kind of abstract away some of the configuration of each individual mesh. And we'll look at that in further videos. But in this case, we're just looking at how to group the multiple clusters and multiple service meshes, Istio service meshes that we've deployed here and treat them as a single mesh. So let's apply this. And what this is gonna do under the covers is assume a, um, a, a trusted root authority for these clusters and it's going to create intermediate certificates on each of the Istio um, control planes and, and sign them with the root CA so that the meshes are, when they communicate with each other, they trust each other's traffic. And so you can get full end-to-end -end mutual TLS from one workload in one cluster in one mesh to a workload running in another cluster in a different mesh. So let's verify that these certificate signing requests were created. And we do see that on cluster one, it was successfully created and on cluster two, the same. And we will go into more detail about this in future videos. But what we're doing here is in, in each cluster, we're creating the keys and certificates and not trying to shuffle them across the, the network. 
but then we create the CSRs and uh, sign them with the, the root cert that is part of the service mesh hub. So let's verify that the CA certs, once the uh, intermediate change were signed or created correctly, we can see that we can have this intermediate in uh, the Istio system on cluster one, and we should see the same thing on cluster two. That's great. Now, one minor limitation of Istio today is that if you change the root CA or if you change the CA um, of the Istio Citadel, then you have to bounce the Istio pod to pick that up. Um, that hopefully will improve and auto be able to automatically discover uh, changes in the, in the root CA. Um, but for now, we have to bounce each of the Istio control planes so that they pick up those new root certificates. Now, once we've established trust between the two control planes, what we can do then is start looking at some of the underlying Istio objects, if you're curious about what Service Mesh Hub is automating and what it's doing under the covers. And in this case, you can see it's automatically creating some of the service entries so that we can communicate from one mesh component, one, one workload to another. So now let's specify routing between our cluster one and cluster two, between the two service meshes. Let's take a look at a traffic policy that we're going to create. And what this says is for the review service, when we talk to the review service, that we want to route 75% of that traffic to the remote cluster, the cluster two, and 15% to version one and 10% to version two on the local cluster and, and the local service mesh. So let's apply that. And come over here and refresh. Oh, wait. The port forward went down. Let's refresh. And what we should see is the red stars, which means our traffic is going to version three of the review service, which lives in the second cluster in, in the second Istio service mesh. So what we've done is we've created a um, routing rule that spans multiple clusters and treats the two disparate service meshes as a single service mesh. If we want to take a little bit closer look at what we created under the covers for Istio, we can see the Istio virtual services and that we're routing to a um, to, to, to the remote cluster for reviews. So that's all I have for this demo. It's fairly um, a lot of stuff that Service Mesh Hub is able to do and simplify for you when running a multi-cluster Istio or multi-cluster Service Mesh deployment. Stay tuned because I'm going to do uh, deeper dives into exactly how all this works and um, some of the benefits that you can expect out of running Service Mesh Hub for your Service Mesh deployments. Thanks. Again, this is Christian Poster from Solo and I encourage you to check out Service Mesh Hub and uh, some of the, the, the news around the announcement around Service Mesh Hub today. Thanks.